This lesson is for AP Calculus. It's the sixth lesson for chapter seven, and it's all about something called the washer method. And uh, right now we're on this page right here, and we're just gonna do two examples today. One will, the first one will not have a lift, and then the next one will. And before we get too far into this problem, uh, I actually just wanna show you a video that I borrowed from the internet. And this shows a different problem, but it's a nice representation of somebody using the washer method. So they start off by putting a couple of graphs down. Uh, the first one's just going to be root x. Okay, so there's where that goes. That's great. And then they're going to put a second function in, and they're going to use this to define the whole, the center of this shape. So it's a nice little linear function. And now we kind of want to know where to finish this. So we'll put a little vertical line in just at x equals 4. Our problem first one of the day is going to have x equals 12. This one's 4 and it defines a very nice little region there which we're now going to spin around a little rotation axis. This will be without a lift just right around the x-axis and when you take this thing and slice it perpendicular to the x-axis you get little washers. They have holes in them and we just have to teach the calculus how to add those up. If you make the washers thin enough you won't even notice that the top edge is beveled. Okay they just have to be super super thin. So we just have to teach the calculus how to do that and then let it actually do the addition. Okay, so this one here says find the volume of a cone. It's going to have a height of 12 and a radius of 4, but it has a hole of radius 2 drilled vertically down through its center. When we're done, we're going to end up with a shape that looks pretty much like that, um, almost exactly actually. Okay, it won't actually go all the way back to the origin anymore because the part all out here will have been drilled away. Um, there'll be this air space in the center. There's the cone edge normally and then this nice little drill bit that's gone through and made this thing hollow. So the original blue cone, it would, uh, it would have had a base down here. Okay, great. But that cone doesn't have a hole in it and I want to have a cone with a hole in it like this. So I'm going to have to drill this thing down the center. And so I'm going to run a drill bit through. Maybe I'll do that in orange. They said the radius was 2, right? So the drill bit's going to go through like this and carve out any material, including the whole tip of the cone. That'll be gone. Uh, we'll carve out a center. That way we end up with this nice little hole in the center and we'll create some washers. Now, the cone itself, before the drilling, used to be 12 long, according to the story right there. And it said the cone was supposed to have a radius of four, the original blue cone. And then we'll do the drilling in orange that you see. Now, when I actually go and take my calculus scalpel and take a look at the shapes that I'm gonna get in there, I'm gonna get some washers. They're a little tough to draw, but there's gonna be like an outer part to the washer like this. Okay, and so it's got like an edge to it in there. But then the drilling is going to create this hole. So there'll actually be a hole here as well, like that. And we just have to teach the calculus. How do you go and find the volume of one of those little coins with a hole in it? Got a few different functions on the go. There's the um, original line that we'll use for the cone. I think we've used this one before, the, the function there. That y could be just one-third x. That would be great. It would have the right slope to it. There's the drilling as well. That's going to be just y equals 2, just a plain old 2, nice and simple. And the point where you actually see the intersection between those two places seems to be right at x is equal to 6. And the whole left half of the cone, the whole tip of the cone, is just going to get obliterated by the drill bit. You know, if you look at this picture here again, we don't see any of the left half of the original part of the cone. It's just entirely gone. So our shape will actually begin at x equals 6 in our story. Now, I'm just going to just kind of pull this apart here a little bit again over here on the side and think about what these washers actually look like. So a washer, if I was to go to the hardware store and buy one, they've got an outer radius, but then they have an inner radius as well. Okay, and we're going to have to tell the calculus about both of those things. So there's a 
in here, a first radius, if you want to call it that, an R1, but then there's also a radius 2 that goes all the way out to that outer edge. And, and it has, of course, some sort of thickness to it, or maybe I should call it thinness, because it's going to be very thin. As long as we can teach the cactus how to find that washer, we should be fine. Now, generally speaking, let's not talk calculus, let's just talk like Math 8 for a minute. A washer volume. All I have to do is subtract out the air in the center. So it's really nothing more than a really big coin minus a little coin of air. That's all I have to do. So I could go pi times the really big radius, radius 2 squared times, you know, the height of that washer, if it was lying on the ground, the thickness of it, minus pi times the smaller radius of air squared times the thickness. And you can write it like that. We're going to see with the calculus that you have an option. You can do a little bit of factoring. There's a common pi. And then there's going to be this radius, big radius squared minus the small radius squared, and then the h, the thickness. Now, that's another way to write it. The first way where you explicitly find both volumes works fine too. Okay, here we go. This one does not have a lift, and so we're just going to ask the calculus to please go and sum up all of these washers to just find the integral of those dVs. All right, so it's an integral. What do we have here? I'm going to go with this, this second picture over here, pi times big radius squared minus little radius squared. So pi, great. And now I'm going to open up a bracket and I'm going to teach the calculus how to find the big radius for this purple washer that you see there. Well, it looks like it's going down to the x-axis. Okay, so the x-axis is down here at y is equal to zero. And so for the big radius, I'd be going blue function minus the x-axis. I'd just be going one third x minus zero. Now, do you have to say minus zero? No, no, you don't, right? It'd be an option, but you don't have to. Maybe just as foreshadowing for what we're about to do on the next page, maybe I'll put it in. Okay, so I've got one third x, and then using the x-axis for rotation, so minus zero. Okay, great, there's the big radius. That's gotta get squared. And now subtract off the smaller radius, the radius of air. Well, that would go from the x-axis up to that orange line, that y equals 2. Okay, great. So for that one, I would have my other function there, 2 minus the x-axis. Yeah, putting in minus 0 is kind of wasting your time, but it'll help figure out what's going to happen on the next page when we do the one with a lift. And that one gets squared. That's just about everything except the thickness of the washer, so I do need to put that in. I'd have to put in a dx in there. Now, this particular story for the integration, you might think, oh yeah, 0 to 12. Well, it was 0 before we started doing the drilling, but that whole left-hand side, right, this whole side here got obliterated away by the drill bit. So I'm actually going to put in for my limits, I'm going to put in here from 6 to 12. And that's, that's probably worth a little note in here, okay? Just be careful. Sometimes when you do this, this drilling of the material where you drill it out, okay? So that drilling changes the limit sometimes. It certainly changed it here. Hey, this thing's done. It's really just some arithmetic at this point to go through that the motions of the calculus. Uh, you could do this one by hand. I would extract the pi out, right? Just leave that out there so it's not so messy. Looks like you're going to be finding the antiderivative of a, a 1 9th x squared. Got to square that before I do my calculus. Uh, minus a 4 dx. Yes, you could do this one analytically if you had to. It wouldn't be the end of the world. So we're going to have um, an x cubed. Uh, that'll pick up a one-third bodyguard, which will join the one-ninth. So we'll have a one-twenty-seventh. And then just a 4x when we do the antiderivative there. Again, evaluating from 6 to 12. I would leave the pi out of it until you're done, because if you leave the pi out, you get this nice answer of, I believe it's 80, and then you can just tack the pi on and say, great, done, 80 pi. So that's the washer method. 
the key thing is you have to square those radii before you subtract. Okay, that's the order here. Square first, then subtract. Whether you do it in two separate terms or bundled together in brackets like that, it's okay as long as you're squaring and then subtracting. If you subtract before you square, that's where the lifts go in. So we're going to see that on the next question. So this final question here of the day has everything. It's got the lift and it's got the washers going on. So if we can get this one dialed in, then, then we're doing really well. Uh, what do we have here? Determine the volume of rotation when the region between the graphs of y equals x plus 2. Okay, I'm just going to graph that. It's got a y-intercept of 2 and then a slope of 1. So by the time I'm at 1, it'll be at 3. 2, I'd be at 4. Okay, that should be enough for me to get a pretty decent graph going. I think that goes like that. And I could use my graphing calculator to help me if I want. And there's um, a parabola there, y equals x squared. Okay, got it. Got Oh, intersection. Great. Got it. Oh, another intersection point. All right, so this parabola comes in like this. Fantastic. There's y equals x squared. Great. Um, and we're going to take that region that's between them. I can see the region. It's this region right in here. Let's see if I can draw that really carefully. There's the region. And apparently we're going to spin this thing around uh, a lifted line around y equals 5. Okay, so that's up here. Here's your axis of rotation. That's the line we're going to rotate around. Okay, lots of different colors, so we can talk about them with the colors. Now, when I spin that thing around, it's going to create this shape, uh, sort of like a bagel. Um, it's going to have a hole in it, and the washers, so if I can draw them in orange here, they would be well, like the air part of the washer would be here. And then the big part of the washer, well, it would actually go kind of like that. So that's what happens when the little gray shaded region there stuck between the curves gets spun around that lifted line. And there's definitely a lift going on here, right? We're going to lift up our axis of rotation from the x-axis to y equals 5. Okay, all I have to do now is just teach the calculus how to play this game. So the volume, I'm going to say it's the sum of a whole bunch of little washers. That's the plan. Okay, so I'm going to go with an integral. There's going to be a pi. And generally speaking, just speaking generically, I want a big radius squared minus the small radius squared. And then some sort of, you know, d thickness. Okay. So my integral, got the pi. All right, now my radius, the big radius. That goes from the rotation line, y equals 5, all the way out to the edge of that washer, which would be the green. Now, it does not matter whether you go red minus green or green minus red because it's going to get squared. So do whatever makes the most sense to you. I've seen some people say, well, I always go with the larger one minus the smaller one. That makes sense. And other people say, no, I always like to subtract the lift. I always like to subtract the axis you're rotating around. That makes sense too. Uh, maybe I'll do that this time, right? So here for my big radius, I want to measure from the red to the green. So I might say, oh, okay, for my big radius, I'm going to take that green thing, the X squared, and I'm going to subtract off that lift. So if I wasn't lifting it, I'd just be subtracting zero. Okay, so there is my big radius, and I have to square that. Okay, subtract the small radius. Right here, I'm going to put the small radius, and then I'm going to square it. 
I might need a little more room actually than that. So for my small radius, it has to go between the red and the blue. Okay, I'm going to take my, my blue function there. That's going to be my x plus 2. And then subtract off my lifted axis, 5. Okay, so far so good. Now, before we go and start worrying, oh, I do need to add two more things on how thick it is. The thickness of that washer will be a dx. Looks like x's are in charge. And we're going to begin the story at negative 1 and finish at 2. All right, so negative 1 going to 2. That's great. Now, before we go and, and worry about what the actual answer is here, let's just take a look at some subtracting. There's quite a few different subtractings going on here. You have got some subtracting that happens very early, right in here. That's because of a lift. So for those lift subtractions, they happen before the squaring. Right? So thinking about the order of operations, those subtractions would happen before the squares on those brackets. And then the last thing that you see happening is this washer, this subtraction, where we take one shape and subtract the other. So it kind of goes lift, then square, then the washer, right, in terms of the order of operations. Okay, so that's maybe just as long as you can visualize that, that's great, right? But the lift subtraction happens first, then the squaring happens because we're working with circles, and then there's the washer subtraction. So if your story only has a washer and no lift, you'll see some squaring and then some subtracting. If it has a, a, a lift but no washer, you'll see some lifting, right, and then the squaring. Um, so you just have to get that order of operations right. Once again, I would leave the pi out of the story. Uh, if I haven't made any mistakes, when I left the pi out of the story, I ended up with like 30.6, I think. And then you can throw the pi in. Or if you want to change that to a fraction, you can say, oh, 30.6 is like 153 on top of 5, and throw the pi in there. So the, the washer method's not really all that, all that serious. It's just subtracting out a little core of air. But it gets a little more interesting when you start lifting up the axis, and you have to do that subtracting. And that marks the end of uh, this lesson, which is actually the end of the AP curriculum. And then next day, we're going to look at one last little topic. We're going to look at another method called shells. It's an optional method that sometimes the Algebra 4 is just a little bit nicer.